a tip, you know what I mean? So people could easily mistake you for Sean Penn, for sure. Oh, is that right? Yeah, All welcome right. to Toronto. Thank you very much. Good man, and uh, welcome to Once Time and all our viewers out there in the diaspora, for sure. Thank you. Um, I've see. just come back from seeing this man's terrific movie. Well, You've made many films, Third World Cup to name a few, and yeah. um, certainly this is your most recent one, Get Alive. Get Alive. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Tell me a little bit about it and, um, you know, uh, people listening out there to go and see the movie and how did they support you? Well, it, PC, it's been a long journey. It's been 10 years in the making. I wrote it in 2001 and it's um, evolved over many years to um, 2006 when I said I'm not going to make it Stop, I'm going to stop writing, I'm not going to do any more until I make this film. And only in the last, in, in 2009, is when I really got an opportunity mm -hmm. to do the trailer and then raise it and then got, get investors to come yes, aboard. To come and then from there, it's all of a sudden it just became very quick, it happened very quickly, you know. And then obviously, the thing about filmmaking, I find, is that. You have to be ready. When they get, you know, it takes a long time, and you get an opportunity. Do your best. Just, yeah. you know, because you only get one shot sometimes, and so you have to make the most of it. Obviously, yeah. so you have to be prepared. And yeah. it really happened very quickly. Even, yeah. you know, even though it took a long time to get there, and when it did happen, mm -hmm. you had to be certainly prepared, and then move forward. And then, you know, within six months, we had a film. Yeah, fantastic. You know? Now the storyline obviously touches on many things from religion to politics to forgiveness to unity to that kind of stuff I mean is that what you're trying to to get to make a statement what was the message you're trying to send to people you know in Jamaica we have a lot of music which I find um, has been over the years been an, uh, not necessarily positive but been negative and I kind of wanted to make a film um, about a social, uh, you know, a social. I mean, a lot of my films are social um, commentaries on yeah. life, you know, yeah. and my life and how, what reflect on life. And I just wanted to make a film about something positive. Mm -hmm. I felt it's the duty of a filmmaker yeah. to do something positive, yes. you know, to kind of counterbalance um, so much of the negative in life. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to um, touch on those points, really, yes. you know. And, yeah. Go forward. Do you realize how powerful a film you've made that can actually be used for great, wonderful purposes, um, especially in um, outside garrison communities? Because even here in Toronto, we have certain communities that would be considered garrison communities by any standard. They're not as tough as the Jamaican ones in that regard, thank God. But at the same time, you know, um, there is great concern about those communities. How do we get these, the, the, the inner city youth, to respond to positive things in life, to have hope and so forth? So, could this film be taken into those communities and shown there and be a catalyst? Would you welcome that kind of a thing? Sure. I mean, as, as a filmmaker, you want your film to be shown. And, and you know, my uncle was Perry Hensel. He yeah. made How Did They Come? And Perry said that if he, he, he only wanted to make a film what changed people's lives, you know? And, and I and I agree with him. If you're gonna make a film, you know, it, it, it should reflect on, it has a strong impact because film is a powerful medium. And I mm -hmm. think if you're gonna do something, do something for the positive, if yes. it can help, you know? And it's funny, the American Embassy has taken my film and taken it to the, the prison in Jamaica to show the youth, you Fantastic. know, the, the kids yeah. there and show them to try and get them to see if they can see a positive reinforcement from the Fantastic. film, you know. So I, I do hope, yeah, that people do use it for good because I yeah. mean, I don't want to make something which. I mean, why would I want to make something? Yeah, it's more of a political statement than anything else. But that—that's what I got well, from I seeing mean, it. Was there it? is a political statement right. in it because I was. I mean, politics runs Jamaica. Let's for be sure. honest, okay? For sure, and um, yeah. people, people's livelihood rely on politics on yeah. many levels. And so there is, there is that whole um, dilemma of whether um, politics feeds their family. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, it's like, well, what's it more important? Right. Your family or politics, you right. know, or your, right. your neighbor. So, right. it's, 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 you know, I just wanted to bring up those issues, yeah. you know. I mean, I don't live in inner city. Yeah. I don't pretend to be in inner city. Yeah. But I, I feel like I'm a Jamaican and I know yeah. enough about inner city and right. the people's plight to be sure. able to say something about it for sure know? for sure where do you go from here next what's the next move 
Well, um, I have other films, and I have a, a film which I have written when I was at film school, and I'd really love to make this film. And this film is a story about Jamaican society, right. socially, so the social levels of Jamaican society. Right. Very much like a film which is now playing in, in American cinemas mm. called The Helper. Oh, yeah. Which I, I haven't seen yet. But yeah. I mean, by the way, the helper is a Jamaican version. The help is a, is the American version, <laughs> but yeah, right. the helper oh. is the Jamaican version. Okay, yeah, right. but yeah, um, I know it's a it's a great film. It's, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I mean, the thing is, this this film I have is called Tenth and Final, and it's a film about a love story, but it's from a poor poor black person right. who is in love with a white farmer's daughter, who is a white oh, person. Interesting. And it's the social levels of Jamaica. You know what it yeah. what it what it takes to you know the different elements of the, our society in Jamaica yeah. so yeah. In, in reflection and once again it's a sports driven film because that right. he uses a racehorse oh. to it's about racehorsing and about him taking his racehorse from the country to the city to try and win the derby to uplift himself and make something of himself so he can yes. win this woman's heart right. you know who is a right. who is a um, you know, socialite, yes, so to speak, yes. and whether Sea Biscuit meets the help, then <laughs> Sea Biscuit meets <laughs> the help. That's all right. Yeah, she's you know? a. Or oh, Wayne drops and says she's a biscuit, and, <laughs> <laughs> and she needs some help. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wayne sends his regards. By the way, I'm sure he's oh. going to have a good laugh at this. Oh, and yeah, you know, yeah. Wayne is doing a film as well. Um, I think it's um, Peter Tosh. Not the stepping razor, but he's doing a new Peter Tosh oh, really? uh, movie. Yeah, he, he's on there. So the film industry, which is why I'm segue segueing to that, yeah. the film industry in Jamaica seems to be, in fact, the Caribbean seems to be really coming into its own. You know, picking up. Um, how do you, how do you see the whole industry? Well, uh, you know, look here. I mean, there's a there's a lot of young kids coming in, and the technology is such that mm -hmm. people can pick up a camera, mm -hmm. they can edit it at home. Yes. And that we don't have to use film. Yes. And, that the fa and the fact that the cinemas now are, you know, don't have to go to cinema. You don't have to make film, you know, film yeah. prints. You can yeah. you can go digital. Yes. So obviously, it's leveling the playing field. But people still want a story. Yes, they want story a story and about quality. people. You know, absolutely. And they still want production value in OPC. They yes. still you need to You're still right. put money behind it. It can't be ch just yes. cheap. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think they still need to have emotional stories or tell stories mm -hmm. and the ca and it has to be a production value it yeah. can't look like shit and it right. can't sound I like shit, you I know what I mean yeah. so it, that that is still a challenge mm -hmm. it's still a challenge you still need money for that yes you know? now if somebody's watching this how can they help what you're doing as a filmmaker and um, also in particular now in light of the recent release of, of Get a Life, but just in general, how, how can they help you? What can they do? Oh well, they can, they can, uh, you know, if we get a release in Jamaica, they can support us by coming to see the film. Right. You know, I mean, I'm hoping that the film is entertaining enough as well as the social commentary right. on Jamaica, and it's a window into Jamaica. Right. That they will come and um, support the film. You okay. know, and, um, what about people living abroad? You know, the diaspora. What can they do? How can they? How can they lobby to get this film distributed in? Um, you know, in a broader to a broader audience. Well, I don't think I think I don't think the people out there watching this can do much to um, help us. I mean, I think it's up to us as a filmmaker right. to find a distributor or find an avenue right. in which we can get it to the public. Right. You know what okay. I'm saying? But we hope that when we get it there, yes. that the public will respond by coming to see the film. Okay. You know? Okay. Basically. Chris, nice to see you again on, on my turf here in Toronto for the Toronto International Film Festival season. Yeah. Great to have seen your movie for sure. Thank you. And um, once time viewers are going to be thrilled. Thank okay. you. Thank Take you very care. much. Chris.